Before we begin, thank you very much to Mace. Uh, thank you for joining my Patreon campaign. Uh, Mace has been a, one of my best friends for a long time now, and he is, uh, he promised to pitch in when I was running low just to force me to keep going and not do my normal intro. So this is his way of bullying me and I thank him for it. All right. So, uh, we got a, I got a lot of stuff in the works right now. So you'll excuse me if I start plugging things before we get into the video here, here and there. Uh, the firstly that we have, uh, the Q and a video coming up on Tuesday. So, you got just a few days left. You can uh, to go to my previous Q and A video I posted at the beginning of this month to leave any question you want me to answer there. Uh, keep it one per person and try to keep it friendly. Like if it's something crude or anything, uh, yeah, I'm I'm going to ignore it. I will try to answer everyone. Uh, it depends on how many questions I get. But if you want me to, if you want me to answer something, if you want to be included, go leave a question there. So, you know how we have this, like, enormous hype train going for the Transformers movie that's coming out in, like, a month and a half or so, coming out in uh, early June? Uh, we have all of this, like, press going on. We just got the new trailer. Like, we found out some more casting. We have the voice of Unicron now. So, through all of this, there's all this chaos that's going on just to promote the current live-action movie, they went and announced another movie. We don't even know how this one's going to go yet. However, we do know that now in production, there is another Transformers movie in the works. It is Transformers 1. That's not going to get confusing with Generation 1 at all. It's not going to get confusing at all. At least it's not like Dawn of the Autobots, you know, or like birth of the robot or what or whatever other kind of like bay verse ism name you could come up with for it. at least it's straightforward you know it's like xbox one you know the sequel to 360 it's weird naming conventions are weird people so hot on the heels of the new trailer yes we are looking at a brand new transformers movie that is now 100 percent animated um and we we're going to go through everything that we have so far on this. We've had rumors of a live action, well, live action universe animated movie for a long time now, like for, you know, going on years at this point. So this is nothing new, but the the uh, the full announcement that it has uh it has a name and it has names attached to it now. That's huge. That is absolutely huge. So we're going to take a look. We're going to take a look. So, Rise of the Beast is still a couple months away, but the next movie project for Transformers is getting on the hype train. CinemaCon today, the Paramount panel touched on the movie and listed off the new name, along with a mega cast of voice actors. Uh, <clears throat> animated origin story called Transformers 1. So, here was the news that, like, shook everybody up. So, uh, we have the main characters, and the, we have the voice actors, or, well, we have the actors for them. And it starts at the top of the list. Optimus Prime is being voiced by Chris Hemsworth. Thor is going to be Optimus Prime. Okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Alright, so we got that. We have uh, Brian Tyree Henry doing Megatron. Uh, not as familiar with the name. Uh, I've looked him up. Uh, actually, haven't looked into his work in the past. So that's that's on me. Uh, Scarlett Johansson as Elita One. So, okay, all right. Uh, Keegan Michael Key as Bumblebee. So, okay, so, um, just got used to him in the Mario movie, and now we have to. Now he's going to play Bumblebee, which is actually kind of cool. Uh, John Hamm is going to be Sentinel Prime. Cool to see him. Lawrence Fishburne is Alpha Trion. There's a name. Heesh. So, let's have this discussion, because this is a discussion we have every single time an animated movie brings in top dollar, like, tr like top tier uh, Hollywood talent. Uh, yes, in a perfect world, 
all of these roles would go to genuine voice actors, not big name Hollywood people who are just going to come in and do voice work, but people who have trained in the art of voice acting, who have more, who have primarily experience as voice actors, because it is a very different beast, right? So in a perfect world, yes, it would be big name voice actors getting these huge roles and getting to star in the animated movie. Um, I wish it was like that, but the truth is voice actors still do not get the credit they deserve. They still do not get the, uh, the marquees. They do not get the attention that they should be getting. It's unfortunate because voice acting is a completely different art form than on screen acting. They relate to each other, but the requirements are completely different. And it does take a lot more practice, a lot more training to pull off a believable voice performance than, say, a physical one. Well, you know, when you, with a physical performance, you have things like body language and facial expression to work with, which don't exist in the animated form. But you still have to get that same range of emotion in there. It's difficult. You know, and we've seen with a lot of Hollywood adapt, with a, a lot of big Hollywood animated movies, it doesn't always translate well. On the other hand, all right, we'll play devil's advocate just for a minute here. The reality is that big names attached to these movies does draw people in. It does draw in just the regular movie-going crowd. We as Transformer fans and we who normally get animation and cartoons as our main source of media for Transformers... We would always prefer that voice actors, genuine voice actors, get these roles. But, unfortunately, it's not the situation here. In Hollywood, they want the big names because Joe Schmo Public likes to see those big names. People will go see this because they like Chris Hemsworth. They will go to see it because they like Scarlett Johansson. And while, yes, it is unfortunate, it is unfortunate the situation... There is also a part of me that is actually grateful that Transformers is now seen as such a big deal that yes, one of the main one of the main actors for the Marvel movies is willing to take a job being a Transformer. You know, you know, Transformers now has that kind of notoriety and popularity that it can draw big 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 name actors. And it's not seen as a downgrade. It's not seen as a, well, my, my career's winding down here. Um, got, got one too many scandals going on. Guess I gotta voice a robot just to make ends meet. No, no. Like, there's actual, like, pride in getting to be Optimus Prime. Getting to be Megatron. And, you know, and I think it's cool that Transformers has gotten so far that big names want to be part of it. Also... I am very much of the crowd of, like, I love Peter Cullen, I have nothing but respect for Peter Cullen, but the guy is getting on, and I do feel like it is time for a new generation to have their Optimus Prime, and we're still looking, you know? Uh, Alan Tudyk does a great job in Transformers Earthspark, I really like his take on Optimus, so maybe he's the voice, maybe 20 years from now people are nostalgic to hear him as Optimus Prime. I could see that, and it'd be cool. It'd be fun. It'd be, you know, and, you know, and, and it's high time to start setting that up, you know, because current generation fans deserve to one day have that nostalgia the same way generation, my generation of fans has that for Peter Cullen. So maybe it is Alan Tudyk. Maybe it's Chris Hemsworth. Maybe this goes over so well that he decides to stick on with the role, you know, and we just get animated movies about him as Optimus Prime for the next 10 years. You never know with Hollywood. You never know with these movies. But I do find it... I do find it really cool that, yes, we have a Transformers sh thing with big-name people in it. Now, obviously, we've proven it works with voice actors because Peter Cullen is a household name these days thanks to uh, his his uh, live-action portrayal of Optimus. That's It's still great. Still great. But... Um, yeah, voice acting is not respected the way it needs to be. Um, like I said, perfect world, it all be named voice actors, but this is the reality of it. It sucks, but there is good benefit to it. 
And ultimately, it's probably going to raise the credibility of the Transformers movies. I mean, I hate to put it that way, but that's kind of true. All right, so we didn't get much in the way of visuals. We do know that it is coming out July of next year. So we've got, okay, a little bit more than a year to soak in info about it. But with a fully CGI animated movie like this, then that does mean it's been in production. It's quite a ways into its uh, life cycle. So we can take a look. The logo itself, little simple, little simple. It's definitely bold, at least. Uh, yeah, there, yeah, we, uh, yes, I recognize actors. Those are definitely actors who exist and act in things. Uh, this is the one key visual they showed off of exactly what we are looking at. And it's a beautiful take on Cybertron. There's upside down floating cities. So are they, we're like in an underground layer or is there like literally just floating skyscrapers for no reason? Um, it definitely doesn't look quite like the Cybertrons we've seen in uh, in the past for animated uh, for animation, uh, but it also does not look like the Cybertrons we've seen in live action so far. And that is the best thing that I have heard, because we've seen Cybertron a few times uh, in live action, and I think it always looks terrible. In the 07 movie, you got a little glimpse of it, and like it just looked like piles of shrapnel. It didn't look like any actual city. We saw it again in the... Uh, we saw it again in later Transformers, and we saw it again in the last night, and it just looked like a ball of hexagons glued together. It didn't really look like a world that people inhabited. This looks like a world people have inhabited. Like, this looks like something. So I really like the look of it. It looks like a bustling Cybertronian city. Um, We'll see once we get, like, real deep into it, just, like, how much it connects to, like, depictions of Cybertron in the past. There's four silhouettes in the front. And we've already kind of hazarded a guess. So the one on the far left is Megatron, uh, followed by Optimus, Elita, and Bumblebee. Now, it's just the shape of the helmet informing that on any of these characters, and it's super small. So he could be off, but most likely not. Uh, it's it's at least interesting. Uh, like visually, if this is what they're going for, it should look really good. And you know, we've touched on this before. It's ILM doing the animation. So that's already like a huge boon. It's a huge boon. All right, so just to kind of pad this video out a little bit, uh, we do have those interviews from Lorenzo, who does need to shut his mouth and stop trying to please everybody and just commit to what these movies are. But he did talk about the the new animated Transformers movie a little bit. He did. He's the one who spoiled the fact that ILM is doing the animation. So, uh, going on more about it. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're, uh, look, I'm looking through things. Um, let's see. You, I, um, in, his, in his quote. So, like, you know, I think one of the difficulties in the past, for instance, is rendering Cybertron is, if you have to try to create the whole planet, it gets really expensive. So, when you look at the intro in the beginning of Bumblebee or in Michael Bay movies, we have different versions of it. This thing has to be a living, breathing environment. And so we had to create an environment that is unique to Cybertron, given the history of Primus and all the things that go behind it. We're allowed to inhabit, uh, if you would, the planet in a way you couldn't do in live action. Thankfully, ILM is a great partner in that. So that talks about the limitations we've had with the depictions of Cybertron in the past in the live action movies. We can only show a chunk of it, and we can't really show it as a living, breathing world because rendering that much gets really pricey. Now, when you're doing it as a fully animated movie, you're talking about work that goes into an animated movie in general. You know, when you see a Pixar or Illumination movie, you know, they kind of have to make whole cities, you know, to fill out the backgrounds. They have to make sure it looks like a world that people live in and work in. When you talk about a living world, what doesn't, what makes me curious is not the complexity of the set, it's not the overall look of Cybertron or the scale of it. It is how lived in it feels. How many, like, just standard Cybertronians am I going to see walking the streets? How many am I going to see that just transform into alt mode to get from one place to another and just, like, transform out 
as just like a casual thing to walk into a building. How many times am I going to see like just random skirmishes breaking out because it's Autobot and Decepticon? Well, well, this is like supposedly like when everything was before then. So maybe not, maybe not that so much. Uh, Cybertron is setting of the animated film, obviously. Uh, we, de we debated a lot in the live action, and it was just financially impossible to do, which is the origin story of young Megatron and young Optimus. If you know the origin, they started as friends, and over time, things developed for them, and they ended up on two sides. So we're telling the young Optimus and the young Megatron story. We really are telling the origin story of all Transformers, both what both what they were at the beginning of it to how they grow to how they grow apart. So the origin to live action Transformers is going to be interesting because I mean, the, the, ba the original 07 movie just said the cube, you know, a cube apparently created by Quintessa in that universe lands on Cybertron and starts basically infecting raw metal with life. For lack of better terminology, that's basically what was going on. Here, like, it sounds like the origin story is going to be way more complex. We have heard mentions of Primus, which has not played a factor in anything Transformers live action yet. So, that is promising. There could be, like, an actual origin to this. Uh, we are talking about, like, uh, the Fallen is in this universe. So, maybe we're talking about an original version of the 13 and how Transformers expanded from there. Um, so, like... There's this really weird bridge where, uh, and this also almost feels like Lorenzo doing the same thing he did with the Bumblebee movie and the same thing with Rise of the Beast, where he's trying to cover literally every base so it sounds like this movie is all things and nothing at the same time. Uh, so, like, if all this plays in, then, like, we're mixing, like, Quin like Quintessa Origins, the 13 Origins, Primus Origins. This could be messy. This could be really, really messy. Um, and I'm also curious how they handle the previous in, in, uh, connection between Optimus and Megatron, because it could be just the bureaucratic side that IDW tried to approach. It could just be, you know, like, you know, you know, coming up, you know, Megatron coming up from the serving class and Optimus is just a number puncher. We don't know. We have no idea, but, you know, it, it's... I'm usually not curious about origin stories for Transformers, but because uh, because we've heard it so many times, but because it's a universe that's really never touched on it in detail, this actually brings about some curiosity in me. Uh, we had another interview which had a few little uh, tidbits. There's a lot more interview here. I'm not going to go through all of this like I did before. Um, it's on TFW 2005. You want to read through it? We will hit the bullet points here. Um, I think I talked about this in a news video or something, but it's worth mentioning again in this video, just so it's all together. Uh, also to take in the stuff that we've learned now. Uh, so yes, it focuses on young Optimus and young Megatron. Um, it'll be great to actually, by the way, see these characters as actual characters and not just like special effects set pieces. Uh, not just fodder for fight scenes. We're actually going to see the characters acting as characters together. Uh, origin explored uh, animated since it's an animated animation project it could work as a new trilogy they're talking about how expensive it is to produce a movie like this because they have to create the entire world of Cybertron meaning yes just like how Transformers tries to reuse parts to constantly improve how much money they're making and how little money goes into the into a new toy this uh, ILM Paramount they're going to seek to do the exact same thing so we are likely not going to get just one animated movie. We're likely going to get, at the very least, a trilogy of them. So this would explore the origins of Transformers, the young Optimus and Megatron, and their original friendship, and then what drove them apart. Which means movie two would likely set up Autobot and Decepticon and depict the first major conflict between them. And then movie three is where you get into uh, potentially Allspark escaping the planet, landing on Earth, etc. Um, that's your three movie flow. Um, it's going to be years before we know if I'm right. So bookmark this video and check back in, in like five years. Uh, we'll find out, you know, when I, when I'm on daily video, like, like 2000 at that point, and we'll find out if I'm right. Um, it's not a coming of age story. Okay. So yeah, it is not like 
seeing young Optimus become not it's not like seeing young Optimus or Ryan Pax become the Autobot leader. Uh, it's just more about the relationship between Optimus and Megatron before the war, before they were enemies. All right, and yeah, July 4th, July 19th, 2024. It has a lot of potential, doesn't it? It really has a lot of potential. Whether or not they pull it off, that's a whole other story. But I am super curious. Of all the big budget live a live action movies, this one's not live action, but... but you get my point. This is the one I'm most excited for, not only because it's fully animated, but because it's going to get to explore a lot of stuff that the live action movies have not gotten to touch. And more importantly, it's going to be a big budget, uh, big budget movie with big names attached to it where the robots are going to be the main characters and we're not going to shove all the story onto the humans who we may or may not actually care about. It's going to be a story about the robots, and that's the part that has me excited. Also, as one final note, if you're getting upset still because, you know, they put Hollywood names attached to this, please go back and, and check our original Transformers movie, where we attached Leonard Nimoy of Star Trek. We attached, you know, stars of The Breakfast Club. Oh, and it's a little... Actor he may never have heard of, only did a few bit roles, like Orson freaking Wells. This ain't new. This is not our first rodeo. Like many things in Transformers these days, it's how things have always been. Stop, stop finding reason to complain about it. Um, it is what it is. Um, and yeah, like, I would prefer voice actors, actual trained voice actors get big blockbuster roles like this. But I understand why they go Hollywood, and it's not necessarily for bad reasons, uh, even if it's not the direction that I like. But I'll take it, because, yes, there's benefits. So, that's everything we have so far on Transformers 1, a brand new animated Transformers movie. And who knows where we go from there. Uh, who knows how slow it's going to be to get news on this one. It's coming out in you know just over a year. So I assume we're going to know something before the year's out. Um, just something to stay tuned for. And of course, I'll report it on this channel. So thank you guys for watching. Um, yeah, tell me what, tell me in the comments below what you're hoping for out of an animated Transformers movie set in the Bayverse, whichever version of that verse we're going to at this point. Uh, and let me know what you're thinking of. So thank you again. I will see you next time. Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face, the algorithm, and I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.